could, yeah. Um, I'd like to call to order the Board of Selectmen regular meeting. This is Tuesday, November 10th, 2015 at 6 o'clock. And the first item on our agenda is public comment. Is there anyone here for public comment? Please come forward. And please state your name and address for the record. Sure. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Lynn Donato. I'm from 23 Mettler Street. Um, I just wanted to thank you, first of all, for the support that you have shown for our Woodbridge Animal Shelter. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As you know, our shelter is in dire need of repairs, including a well that will work properly and hopefully as soon as it's installed. Um, we've had trouble, as I'm sure you already know, with the well thing, so we're trying to resolve that as quickly as possible. All of us who love and are dedicated to our shelter would like it to become a stellar location uh, on the map of Woodbridge. This can happen if you would all consider us for the steep grant. Thank you and have a good evening. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Thanks. Yes, please. Good evening, Pat Rubin. 263 Downs Road, Bethany, Connecticut. I am the liaison to the shelter from Bethany. Um, I've been associated with the shelter for 18 years, and this is the most positive thing I have seen, and it's wonderful. And I know I spoke to Derry today, and we both agree, we're both very supportive of the grant. And she was sorry she couldn't be here tonight, but she had uh, another meeting. But thank you, thank you so much for considering this. Thank you. Uh, my name is Barry Collins. I'm from Bethany, and I have had a long-term interest in this shelter ever since the early 1990s, when DACLO, the District Animal Shelter Organization, was formed. There were four of us. I was one of the four. Bridget Albert was the one that initiated it, and we never thought how bad things were. <laughs> we knew things were not good, and we all cared about animals, and we got other people involved from Bethany, Orange, and Woodbridge. And I think there was some from Prospect initially when they were in. And it was just sort of when we looked at the, looked at the shelter then, and it's not that different from now, it was an understatement in terms of what needed to be done. We were cleaning runs. We were just doing day-to-day -day sort of stuff. Cleaning runs, uh, laying new floor tile where it was so bad that we, we just, you know, it didn't look nice for people to come into the shelter. I was painting the inside of a dog run one day, and there was a, a wire maybe a dog had chewed on it, there was a piece of wire sticking out, it just came with an ace of <laughs> causing a serious problem with, with one of my ankles, because I didn't, I just saw it at just in time, but I could have severed an ankle, uh, severed an artery in my ankle, I mean, and probably some dog that got out of boredom or loneliness was chewing on it. But our first job was to raise money, which we put our money where our mouth was. The board was only meeting, I think, about four or five times a year, within two or three months after we got going, they were meeting 12 times a year because we had so many things to tell them and to try to get some more money into the budget. They had $600 for veteran, veteran veterinary care for the year. And the first thing that happened when we were on, when we came in was that a puppy on Amity Road, uh, straight out into the, he was obviously straight with his mother, straight on the road and some kid hit it, kept right on going and left the puppy there with two broken legs. The shelter came and got them, somebody called them. And all of a sudden we had, like $2,000 worth of bills sitting in front of the board. They only had $600 for the year. So we began doing things to raise money. And the biggest one that we found was do donations up at the airport. But took in our time, we had to gather all these donations from all kinds of people. We I put public big publicity in the paper. And um, the first thing I did, however, I should say, I was with the register at that point as a reporter. And I wrote up three different stories about this puppy. And the first, the first day, practically, the story appeared. We had five envelopes in the mail, each one with about $100, and one had a $100 bill with no address or name. Barry, are you telling us that if we go ahead with the shelter, you'll be helping with fundraising, for private <laughs> fundraising? <laughs> Is that the message? You can't imagine how, and, much, and you've done such a great how, much, fundraising <laughs> I, how much fundraising I did. But anyway, we got several thousand dollars just from those articles, not more than paid for the puppy, of course, and set up the the funds, and so then th things came along. Then ARF, when we began to sort of fall down from lack of energy, ARF came along and picked up the piece where we had left. 
but there's just so many problems there. You heard about them. The water, I think, is probably the most crucial. It's just a lousy, it's not a very, it's, I say it's not a very good location, but the water problem has other ways of being solved. But, but maybe another location, I don't know, that's, somebody's got to take those up. But it's just so inadequate, and we, the workers work, so, I don't mean the volunteers, they work too, but, but the staff work so hard, and it's just not fair to expect town workers to do that kind of, that level of commitment to the animals and to the to people who come in to adopt and not have some decent facilities for them, including just clean drinking water. It's just not a way to treat town workers. Anyway, uh, it's a wonder we've kept staff, including Karen, who is a pro and dedicated. They've done everything to make the structure usable, keep it clean, as well as keeping the grounds attractive in summer. And that, that's an important point. People coming and see attractive plantings, which have been all donated. And that only place has somebody's going after the, the, uh, the donations, of course. But anyway, you know the shelter is inadequate. It's unhealthy for animals. It's, and there are many updated shelters or new shelters in this area. Hamden's finally getting one. They never had one, if you can imagine. They use a, a, a dog uh, veterinary service. And um, Brantford, I know, has a, nice, nice, has a nice one. Anyway, there being both the various towns that are on equal with the, our district. And uh, there's no reason why we can't do that because we have upgraded our town garages, our fire departments, our schools. And this is part of the infrastructure of a modern, caring town, which Woodbridge and Bethany and Derby are. So I just hope that you will put your concern and immediate action into this whole situation. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else? John Lipson. Um, I've heard the word dire this evening. I'm using it also. This evening, the Board of Selectmen will be hearing information and voting on an application for a steep grant for our animal shelter, which services the towns of Bethany and Derby in addition to Woodbridge. The shelter is in dire need of renovation and repair. The money from the steep grant will be a great aid to improving conditions at the facility. I am hoping the Board of Selectmen will unanimously um, agree to give the people, as well as the animals in the communities that this facility services, a shelter they can be proud of. I thank you in advance for voting to make this happen. <clears throat> My name is Suzanne Principe at 66 Pease Road here in Woodbridge. And I just want to thank you also for listening to everyone and um, really considering um, the steep grant for the district animal control and how dire and important it is. I just visited the little horse down there today and wow, it's really something. But there's a lot needed. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else for public comment this evening? Elliot, did you want public comments? Yes. Yeah. Uh, my name is Elia Alexiades, 14 Seymour Road, and uh, I'm the chairman of the fire commission. And I wanted to extend my personal and public thanks to the Woodbridge Volunteer Fire Association uh, for the wonderful truck or treat uh, event we had on Halloween at the fire station uh, last Saturday night. And that thanks goes to all the individual firefighters, so the officers and our staff, and everyone else who sits at the police department, our town businesses and residents who, uh, who contributed in terms of uh, donations uh, to help support the event. It's really, there were thousands of kids there, thousands of people. It's, I'm, I have no doubt that it's the biggest uh, single event uh, we have in, in town in town every year and there were more smiles than you could count on the I always said if you're in a bad mood go to the truck or treat party and the smiling kids will, will will cure whatever whatever ails you and you know it was topped off with this really terrific uh, fireworks display so I want to thank the Board of Selectmen and you know the entire town administration for their support and especially the uh, uh, the firefighters that 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 work so hard to to, to make it happen Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else for public comment? Okay. Um, item number two is Woodbridge Board of Education. Dr. Stella had a conflict this evening, so he won't be here. So we will move on to item number three, 
which is um, the animal control shelter and the steep ramp. Uh, as I think everyone recalls, last month we uh, began our discussion of applying for the next steep grant. <coughs> just about every year, Tony, right? We, we do yes. apply for a steep grant, Correct. which is a state aid for uh, projects in small towns. And we've had many requests for steep grant funds, as we do every year, and we sorted through them and really tried to separate wants from needs. And of all the different um, considerations that we saw and talked about, Tony and I had concluded that the real need was for the animal shelter. And when we talked about it last month, there was a request for additional information and um, also for looking into other towns, the possibility of what it would cost to go to other towns. At this time, Tony has some additional information that he can provide. And um, I understand that there is no longer, people are not looking to look into other towns, if that's correct. Tony will present his information. And if everyone is satisfied this evening with that, then we can go ahead and take a vote on proceeding with uh, applying for the steep grant for the animal control shelter. If there are people on the board who still require additional information, this is the time to ask for it. So Tony, do you want to sure. bring us up to date? Um, oh. Certainly. We um, have had a, um, I mean, there was a, several ways to approach this. And um, in order to um, uh, be able to get this on this agenda for your consideration as um, the sooner we uh, can get this information together to apply, the better off we are as we are able to um, apply for the grant, which is typically, at least the last few years, has been on a rolling basis. I mean, there is a deadline for a, for a submission, but the quicker we get it in, um, it seems to be the better off we are. Um, so we had a local professional help us with a um, just a, a narrative and an estimate based on a, um, a cursory review of the facility and some research on the um, various needs at the facility. It's by no means a complete study or a um, something that um, uh, is something that we would, um, you know, we didn't have a complete drawings or anything of that nature, but it just gives you a flavor for the types of things that would need to be looked at in this facility. As you can see, um, the total estimate at the bottom is a little over $500,000. That does not include hookup for the water, so that brings it up to a little under $700,000, but again, this is just a cursory review, and um, we would tailor it to uh, the available funds that we have. So um, in, in terms of prioritizing the most important items for a renovation. Uh, to get a more uh, complete review and budget for the facility would, of course, take longer and would cost some money. Um, we would do that at some point anyway, assuming we went forward with the steep grant and were awarded the steep grant as part of that process and would be funded by the steep grant. But um, so th that's what we have so far for your review. And Tony, I, just to confirm that we do go ahead and apply for steep grants with this kind of information. Correct. We've done that in the past. And, and then we pretty much every so single one that we've had. Okay. So, when so, we so, so if we get a steep grant approved for half a million dollars. That's right. Correct. correct. It'll be, uh, you have to use the money specifically for this project. It can't be used for any other That's project. That's correct. And do we have to use it? Do you have to use the steep Yeah, can, do, can we not accept it? If they approve it, do we, can we can wave it, it back? Can we wave it back to them? Or? I, I don't know. I, I, I suppose. You can. I don't think you're, you're forced to take You're not forced to, to, to use it, but. I would imagine if you did that, then the next time we apply for a steep grant on another project. Okay, and, that, and that's fair enough. The reason I asked the question, so if we get a $500,000 steep grant, right, mm -hmm. and this project is over seven hundred. That's just $700,000. It's not necessary that we have to do all these items. Right. Okay, so when do we determine we when we're, what we're going to do? So we, we would, like we would do with most projects of this size, we would have a, a professional help us put together bid specifications. Mm -hmm. We would then go out to bid based on the professional would provide us an estimate mm -hmm. about where we th the, the person thinks we are. Then we'd go out to bid, typically with add alternates, so that we have a base bid. And then we would say uh, an add alternate for our audio system, an add alternate for 
whatever, uh, you know, office relocation or things maybe that aren't quite as imperative or important as, say, um, improving the outdoor runs or uh, water, some system. water system or things that maybe are more um, important. And then, and then you would then have the funding designed for the, um, the project. You can't obviously go forward with the project until we have the funding in place. So that's right. So then we have 500,000 and you do all that and we have a $700,000 project. I don't know that that's the case, but it's possible. I don't know if that's the case. And so then, no, no, but it's, but it's, but it's possible. You have a $500,000 project based on the um, project that was approved for um, when the, the uh, bids were received. If there were other items that maybe would be done down the line or things that maybe weren't done at that time that could be budgeted for properly, maybe that's what you would do. Um, on this list, um, most of them are like sort of systems that need to be put in place in the building. Mm -hmm. However, is there, shouldn't there be, first of all, a plan of the building? Of course. That's right. the first thing we would okay, do, just, just to give you a sense okay. of these the are, types of things. So in other words, yeah. if, you have, if your roof is leaking, I mean, all these things are for nothing. Those are the, the most important yeah. things. Right. I, I think that the state grant is to begin the project. And okay. I also understand there is going to be a fundraising effort, a 5013C, that will <coughs> be set up to aid the project so, so that sure, the town sure. won't have to, you know, come up with a right. lot of funds. No, um, that, that's uh, reasonable. Um, I just wanted to know I, I that there was such a plan. I have a First. statement that I'd like to read. I don't know if it's a good time so to do it. So did you yep. finish what you wanted yeah, to Yeah, I did. Okay. okay. Thank you. I'm better when I have it prepared. Um, knowing my passion for animal welfare and in recognizing the need, our first selectman asked me earlier this year to look into the needs of our animal shelter. As many are aware, the shelter is in need of access to city water because of the poor quality of well water in that area. The plumbing is unreliable and outdated. The current exercise areas are in deplorable shape. The facility needs new doors, updated lighting, and fencing for security and safety of staff and animals. The electrical infrastructure needs to be modernized, brought up to code, and augmented with backup power in case of a power outage. And we need to install improvements to promote energy efficiency. Over the summer, I joined with some of our human animal friends in order to tour, sorry, <laughs> I didn't want to say animal friends because it sounds like I went out with dogs and cats, <laughs> in order to tour two adequately resource energy efficient. I took, I brought some photos which I can pass around and it's, uh, we went to Brantford and Stratford and I don't know if you want to take a peek at some of the pictures I took. Oh. Um, I'll get it back. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. We saw a facility in Stratford that was built new and a facility in Brantford that was recently renovated to comply with modern standards. We compiled a set of photos, which you have now, and um, the photos will give you an idea of a potential for what our animal shelter could look like. In the course of these discussions, I met with Ellen and Tony a couple of times, and we think the best path, I think the best way to upgrade the shelter, if you all agree, is to fund it with the STEEP grant. This is exactly the type of project for which STEEP funds are, are needed, um, and excuse me, intended, and um, Tony met with a local expert, and this is sort of a composite of that, but these are really just estimates. We, it could be more, it could be less. We have to really dig down and get that once God willing, we get the state grant. Um, most importantly, we must upgrade our facility. It's a matter of compliance, and we have to do this. We live in Woodbridge, and our residents, I believe, deserve and expect a facility consistent with modern standards. And most of our constituents are in strong support of this upgrade. An up-to-date up facility will continue to attract volunteers and visitors and support the healthy animal adoption that the shelter enjoys, enabling us to maintain the no-kill policy that is the pride and culture of this town. The upgrade is not only a necessity, it is the right thing to do for those creatures who did not ask to come into this world but deserve every chance to find their forever homes. So that's my statement. I have. I agree with everything she said. Oh, yay. <laughs> but, but, uh -oh. I'm looking at a bit over $700,000 here. So I, I just, I, I mean, to me, we should have been more prepared and we should have had a better idea of what we wanted and how we could do it and what it was really going to cost because I fear that we're going to get the 500000 and the town's going to have to pay more than that. And if, we're, if you guys are all prepared to do that, I'm prepared to 
to sign on to this, but can I, I do have concerns. Okay, let's, let's. Can, I, can I make one comment about that, if that's okay? Yes. Um, Steve Grant, um, I've, since I've been on the board, and can, correct me if I'm wrong, Tony, mm -hmm. we do these sometimes without a project. We, we apply them to a project, but we don't know specifically what we're doing. For example, we have a steep grant, I believe, for the police station. Correct. We have no plans. We had a steep grant for the fire department prior to the plans. Mm -hmm. um, the, the old firehouse. Where the old firehouse? Where the old firehouse? Mm -hmm. I don't know about public works. We had one for public works. Okay. Also. Again, no plans, just. That's good. It's a start. It's awesome. Okay. I suggest that's the wrong way to handle it because it gets us spending more money that we don't even know we're going to have to spend. And it sounds great to say we have steep grant money behind us, and it's, this is really you know not going to cost us much, but it, it ends up costing us. You know, the same thing happened over at the playground when, when I first joined the board. It wasn't going to cost us anything. We had a two hundred thousand dollar grant. This is going to be great. And I, I think we're upwards over 50000 now to the town. And, and, and that's fine. I'm not against that. And I'm, not, I'm certainly not against this. I just, I, I just find it hard to do business this way and know what we're ultimately going to spend as, that's right. as, as, a, as the you know, administrators of the town and the town's money. But so, I agree with what you said, and I think I, I, I know we need this down there, but I, I just think it's... A little off kilter. Maria, I'm sorry, were you saying something that you No, I agree with you. I agree with you. you, don't, you are, you, are you comfortable I mean, with the information that you I'm, have? I'm comfortable with the information. I would like to support the application, but I see his point. I do not, uh, I mean, you know, I do not want the town. I mean, I'm sure these people are all, f you know, are all capable of raising other funds, and that's what I'm hoping for if we get the grant. Can I, can I oh, go ahead, Tony. Tony, go ahead. Tony, 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 and maybe would make me feel more comfortable is I, I have no problem and I think we should be applying for the grant and I also think that it's going to take a little time as it always does whether we when we find out when we can actually get the money and in the interim I'd like to start to develop a more hard and fast plan this is obviously something that will suffice for a grant and hopefully we'll give it to us based on this alone but I would like to start to develop that plan plus it gets us a little bit ahead of the game to know what we need to spend, where we need to spend it, whether or not the town will need to put in money, or how much money the private sector will have to raise. But I actually want to go to the other side of it. Even before this, or during this process, let's put it that way. And I brought up last time, and, and I'm, I'm still not sure I received a, a, an answer, or we know what we're, how we're going to proceed. This process may take us who knows, a year or two before we could ever actually start to do this kind of work, even if we get the grant. Based on history, I would say it's certainly going to take a while. There have, there have been, in, in last year's budget, we did approve certain funding for the animal control shelter, including some things that were more outside, not necessarily the facility, I, and we've discussed this before, the fence, maybe the dog run over the uh, outside of the building. And we haven't finish those projects we've talked about we're going to do them and of course when this conversation started we start let's take a step back see what the bigger plan would be but bigger plan and going forward with the grant is great i still think we should address some of those smaller needs that are on the outside like the fence like the door to better the facility where we can on money that we not only approved but we budgeted for and I think we should talk about doing that as well as this. And I'm not against this. I'm for this. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying I think we should keep that in mind and spend a little of the money that was approved by the town, by us, to get those things done mm -hmm. in the interim. And hopefully this plan will go and we'll build a great facility. And so we have worked with, with, the, um, with the staff there. And we actually have some fencing that will be replaced. 
Yeah, I'd like to, right. you don't mind, Susan, I, just, I just would like That's to respond right. to that last point first. What we don't want to do is waste the money that would be that we could be putting towards this project. So if there are some things, and I know Tony spoke with Karen to yep. really sort through those things, we don't want to spend the money just because we put it in the budget, the budget. if in fact we're going to be tearing it up within the next six months well, or a year. I'm Excuse not me, Tony, let me just finish. Okay. So um, I don't know the answer, but I know that Karen and um, Tony have talked about it. We have, it. and we're working t closely together to make sure that we strike a balance between what the structure needs and um, so. Yeah, okay. strike, striking the balance is great. And, and to your point, Ellen, I, if, uh, if I by any means imply that I'm looking to waste money, let me rephrase what I said. We did pass it, we approved it, the town approved it, and some of, like I said earlier, there's parts of the, what we did approve were meant for the outside of the facility, the fencing, the outside door run. If those things are somehow a waste of money <coughs> between now and maybe a year or two years from now when we fix the facility, I'd like to see that. But if it is something that we should do now because the facility is lacking in those areas and it won't interrupt with mm -hmm. this larger plan, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. I'd like to go forward. I don't think there's a disagreement. I don't think there's disagreement, and I think it's important that we get that assessment from the experts. I don't consider myself an expert. Perhaps you are, Tony. I don't know. But no, I they did basically accuse that I was looking to somehow waste money. No, 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 no. I just said uh, that was how well, we assessed it. That was the way it sounded to me. So uh, let's I, I just clarify that. No, but we did assess what was in the budget. We were certainly aware of that you made the point. It was a very good point, and Tony followed up on it. Mm -hmm. um, Tony, how long do we have to spend the steep grant? We have a few years usually, don't we? Typically, um, you establish the timeline on the steep grant when you when you set the contract with the agency. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, the uh, police steep grant was, I think, five years. Okay. So, um, to Joe's point, so that gives us some time my point. to look at the numbers. Perhaps we can do things in pieces over the years, and I do very much appreciate Beth's work um, with members of the community who have made a commitment to do private fundraising as well. <coughs> you know, this is not a perfect system, but I don't believe there is a perfect system. And what the steep grant allows us to do is indicate our commitment to go ahead with this, to have a good, solid base for assessing. We could use the steep grant funds if we get them to take the next steps that we need to take. Yes. It certainly is a very significant contribution to a town project that I think we all agree we need to do. Mm -hmm. So although uh, nobody is saying here that it won't involve town funds, but this is a good start to make sure we can get it done. Susan, I'm sorry, you had wanted um, to say I, something. I got covered. Thank you. Okay. Um, is there anything else? <coughs> Uh, if not, is there a motion to authorize the first selectman to pursue the steep grant uh, and to put it towards the refurbishing or uh, re renovation or rebuilding of the animal control um, center? Here. I will make that motion. And I'll second. Okay. okay. Any other questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, we're now at item number four. And uh, Chief Fire Chief Sean Rowland is here to talk about the funding to repair Engine 9. We'll do, Chair, we'll do the funding request probably during. We can do the funding request. Oh, that's got the memo. Yeah, yeah. So what I'm passing out to you, what I'm passing out to you is the funding request written up by by, Ter, by uh, Tony, and um, the last item is the memo from the chief, and that is what will be considered now. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good evening. 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 Good it was, uh, like uh, Ely said, it was a big uh, big success. It was over, we est estimated around 3,000 people. Um, handed out in the area 50,000 pieces of candy. Uh, we had nothing but positive comments. Is that a good thing? That's, well, that's a good thing if you're a dentist. Um, we had nothing but positive comments. The week of Halloween, our first book page, uh, we had over 3,500 hits. 
the week after Thanksgiving with all the thank yous and positive comments. We had over 3,500 3, hits. And uh, yesterday we uh, were doing Santa at the Firehouse again like we do every year on December 19th. And just yesterday and today we had over 2,200 hits. So we got a lot of good PR coming through. It's, and it means people look at it. Yeah, or, okay, and okay. like it or... I'm, I'm old. I, <laughs> yeah, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> My day it was like this. The, uh, <laughs> was funny. Going back to truck or treat for a minute, the extra food that we had left over, which wasn't a huge amount, but we had some, we actually donated to the soup kitchen. And the extra candy, we actually uh, sent it over for the troops. So everything uh, went well, and uh, we got a lot of donations, a lot of positive feedback. So hopefully we'll do it again next year. And uh, we're going to talk about it tonight later at our meeting. So we'll keep you informed. Before, All right. Before you move off that, Sean, yes. I, I want to extend my thanks to the Fire Association. I know Susan and Beth and Maria and Tony were there. I think everybody saw how successful it was. As Aliyah already pointed out, there were not just smiling children, but every adult was smiling as well. It was hard to tell with Tony with that mask on, but I think he was smiling. Um, <laughs> and it, uh, certainly extremely well attended, and I have heard nothing but wonderful comments and gratitude to the Fire Association. And I know how hard you all work to put it together, and Beth did as well. So thank you all so much. Thank you. All right. So why we're actually here tonight is Engine 9 is our 1995 E1. Um, we've had some issues in the past with it. Uh, we actually sent the truck out for its regular preventative maintenance and they had to pull the tires every two years. And what they did is when they pulled the wheels, the brakes were uh, shot on all three axles. So we're not talking like a car where you take your car to the mechanic, we need brakes, rotors, this needs drums, the whole nine yards. So. It ac actually ends up being about thirty-five to about four thousand a a axle. Mm -hmm. So we're looking. Uh, we had that issue. We had another issue with the springs on the truck. The truck had to go to Superior Spring. The shackles broke on it. They had to pull the springs off because all the grit and everything got between the springs when the shackles broke. They had to clean that all. Put the shackles. Put all new shackles back on. Put the truck back together. And we had a bunch of emergency lighting now on the truck, which needs to be repaired. Um, God help us if the truck got into an accident or somebody hit the truck and we didn't have all the emergency lighting working, the town would be responsible and liable for that. So we're in the process of getting all that fixed um, now. And what's also nice about it is we can't go with the original lighting that was on the truck back in 1995, which were strobes. They're becoming obsolete and we can't get parts and the light heads that are on it won't fit. Um, the new lights, uh, the new strobes won't fit onto there so we're going to change it over to LED which is actually going to save um, the truck a little for another few years because we're taking a, quite a bit of load off of the truck on the engine and everything with the LED lights knowing that they draw almost nothing compared to drawing a lot so we're going we're gonna to save on that end. I mean, that, that's a considerable number right now. We're looking at over $11,000 to change those lights, and that doesn't include everything. And I'm going to find money in our operating budget, which we have to replace the scene lighting on, which is all halogen, which we have an issue with the generator on the truck. So if I had to replace the generator, I'd be coming and asking you for roughly another $30,000 plus to replace the generator on the truck. So we're trying to expand the truck's life here. The truck is a 1995, it's gonna be 21 years old. Um, and these issues are gonna come up on, we have an aging fleet coming up, so we're gonna start seeing some of these. Um, the total number we're asking for tonight uh, at a contingency um, is, stand by. We have, have 28,227.70. Yeah. That includes the emergency lighting, the brake job. We had a transmission issue on the truck, a transmission leak, which they had to repair, an ABS sensor, and some other things, and the spring work for uh, Superior Spring. So. This truck uh, go, I'm sorry, is it, can I speak? Go ahead, please. Yes. I'm jumping out here. Um, I'm a little fired up. Um, no this truck goes to, <laughs> oh, no pun intended, yikes. 
This, uh, the tr this truck responds to? This truck responds to all motor vehicle accidents, car fires, it's used a lot, right? It's used a lot, yeah. and it's the backup piece, the number seven. Yeah, okay. okay. It takes okay. that Santa to Sean, that. is it out of commission right now? Is it in the shop? Or it's, it, we actually just got it back last week. Um, the, like, they, they were able to rig some of the lights where they can work. It's not, they're not going to last, so we have the new emergency lighting on order. Hopefully we should have that in sometime next week, and as soon as it comes in, they're going to start putting it right on. And, and it's 21 years old? I'm sorry? Is it 21 yeah, years old? Yeah, it's in 1995. It's going to be 21 years old. And, and it's, um, if I'm reading this right, scheduled for specification committee based on what you told us before in 2023? That's what we're hoping for. Um, that's my question. Are we going to make it with this truck? <laughs> I think we'll make it with this truck. I think we'll make the. We're, uh, it's going to be close. I can't guarantee that, but and I'm hoping to extend some of these. But we need to start really funding it these. Sounds trucks like you've really year. looked at the truck. I'm just asking: Is there a way? You know, can you pay someone a few bucks to do a survey on these things to see? If, does that make any? The trucks sense? go out a few times a year. They have to be maintained quite a bit. We have to keep uh, strict records on them. Uh, they need to be DOT inspected and everything else, so we get our DOT stickers and everything else. So they do get inspected uh, uh, usually a couple times a year. Okay, so I mean, just to give you just to give you a heads up, just because we had some of the other trucks in, um, and we have some of the bills here which we pulled purchase orders for, which is understandable. But just giving you a heads up, like on um, uh, let's see here, where are they? engine. Engine three is over four thousand dollars this year. Uh, that's just to go in for routine maintenance. Engine two is over forty-five hundred dollars, and rescue one is going to be closer to five thousand dollars. So we're spending a lot more on maintenance because the trucks are getting older, and we're going to have more issues creep up like this. Well, engine, that's expected. Engine, engine two is a year, so yeah, a lot of these are now looking to replace for eight to ten years. So. Well, engine three is up. Uh, next right after That's the last year, but engine two and nine are engine two. Uh, engine two is a uh, 2003. I think we have that scheduled for replacement in 2027. It's like a baby in our front. Uh, right? Yeah. So one of our newer engines, engine engine which is engine. which is pretty. <laughs> it's 2003. So I mean, you look at it. It's already 12 years old. Is your first attack engine that you're relying on? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So to Joe's point, though, you know what might be helpful <clears throat> is since they they are starting to go in and, and getting looked at or getting assessed. You know, at budget time, which is coming up soon enough, if there's any changes to that chart where you think, gee, engine nine is going to be needed a lot sooner than engine, we kind of replace them in order, or right. might be helpful in case we right. know where that truck's not going to make. I it. think the order we have them in right now is is a pretty is a pretty good order. Okay. Whether whether they last to that point, that's another okay. that's going to be another question. So if you see reason to maneuver one or another it might just be helpful to know as those come up right no, there's reason to replace them all at once <laughs> but that's not doesn't make uh, that's not fiscally prudent no. but but they you know the need is there the need is there already we have a 25 year that replacement plan that we work on but mm -hmm. we that's mostly honored in the breach Susan did you, did you want to ask something you've been waiting very patiently oh I uh, actually I, I I just wanted to clarify the um, brake work has already been done. Correct. Okay. I mean, brake work and the spring work. And the spring work. Because mm -hmm. my first year last professor meet. said, you know, the car doesn't start, that's inconvenient, but if the car doesn't stop, that's a problem. That's right. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. This is, a, this is a car. This is actually, just to put it, this is like a missile going down the road. Correct. Like, there's no brakes. Correct. We're going through everything. So, uh, it's, uh, it's about 28 tons. Mm. Because so remember, all those trucks also hold, hold like 3,000 gallons of water. Two, two to 3,000 gallons of water. And how long was it out of commission when you had it? It was out of commission for almost three weeks. So that's a long time. It is a long time. Yeah, okay, all right. Well, and, the, and, the and we're relying on Engine 7, which gotcha. is coming in hopefully two weeks. That's the, the new, new Engine 7 right. is going to replace the old Engine 7, so right. we were relying on a piece, of, a piece of machinery that's already 25 years old. So right. we have redundant systems, but... Okay. Redundancies go down this problem. Correct, correct. So we'll, we'll actually take up the funding transfer under Tony's report. Mm -hmm. Are there other questions now for Sean? Anything else? Okay, well, thank you very okay. much. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. And nice work on that truck or treat. Thanks. I don't know who Glenda the Good Witch of the North was, but her costume was fabulous.
She was great. What? Who was the one with the umbrella? It was amazing. The costumes were great. Yeah, the costumes were amazing. Um, we're at item five, which is the issue of the Landon Street Common, and Deputy Chief Stewart is here. And um, did you want to come up with Chris Dickerson? I don't. Okay. So uh, you're going to talk about your proposal, and um, if we take it up tonight, it will be under funding request later in Tony's report. I don't. Have we gotten any documentation? Just a funding request for the uh, engineering. I see. Important. Okay. So why don't you tell us what, what you've brought, what you've brought this evening? Okay. Do I have a copy? Well, yeah. why don't you why don't you just tell, tell us what tell us what what you right. just before I start, I, just, you know, I want to commend the fire department also. I says, you know, I, I we worked very closely with them uh, in the preparation of the event and everything, and, and everything went off very smoothly. I mean, no complaints. Uh, Sean actually solicited one of my officers and had him passing out candy most of the night too. So you did it too, did yeah. you? <laughs> Officer Iannucci, you know, and he, and he loved it. Uh, it, was, it was really a nice, nice event. Well, thank you. Great and job. Yes. And, no, and nothing yeah. happened. I mean, and they are, they're, they're getting better than, than, they've gotten much better than Land, um, than uh, Penny Lane. <laughs> oh, I didn't hear that. You're venturing into dangerous territory. <laughs> yes, I am. Uh, and thank you, and please thank the officers who helped out as well, because it was a very, um, very well-run community right. event. So thank you for that. Okay, done. back to Landon Street. Back to Landon Street. Uh, last time I went, met with you, you you, um, you asked me to find out what it would cost to permanently put uh, rumble strips as well as the um, uh, uh, the mid block bars in the, in the middle of Landon Street. Uh, I apologize for the delay, but you know, you know I end up end up going out to see Luke's Engineering. I met with uh, uh, Ron Dagan, uh, the engineer from them. Uh, last week, we went down there. We assessed the, the, the location, the industry. Uh, I mean, some of the, the significant issues that he, th he thought were, were the driveways. There's so many driveways on the street, as well as the drainage. So there definitely was a need for an engineering to be done. Um, what he is going to do is he's going to design plans, specifications, uh, quantity and cost estimates for construction of two uh, speed humps and a mid-block um, speed table. Um, with permanent insulation. Um, the cost of his engineering is uh, going to be $4,800. Uh, and I'm here tonight to, to request funding so we can go ahead with that. Um, I, got a, I, I got another estimate, but just off the top of, you know, off the top of my head, about ten grand for the, what it would cost to put the rumble strips or the, uh, the um, traffic calming in. So you're looking at about a fifteen thousand dollar project. Probably about fifteen thousand dollars. Don't quote me. That's with the two humps and the table. Correct. And the engineering. Correct. The engineering for fifteen for all. Yeah, and there's going to have to be. He'll indicate proper signage and everything under state sta standards and everything. So it, it's. Uh, it'll, but he'll have everything done soup to nuts, other than the actual construction of it. And have you abandoned the temporary? Um, idea I think that was one of the questions that came up last time you were recommending temporary and we were all sort of uncertain about why one would do temporary and what the different costs were so are you I guess is Ron Dagan looking only at permanent installation permanent installation we wouldn't really need insulation for the temporary uh, because if we had an issue with with drainage or anything like that we could we can bring we could take them up at any any time uh, you know he, he, he did indicate there was you know there might be an issue with emergency vehicles uh, he's going to check with the fire department on that and, and, and just, you know, every, all those answers, you know, he'll be able to come back with. When we spoke with uh, the director of public works, he was much more in favor of permanent structures rather than the temporary structures. He was not as confident that temporary structures would last or be as easily plowable than mm -hmm. the permanent ones. And when he gave us the estimate of the cost to install the permanent ones, and it was in my opinion, very inexpensive. It seemed to make logical sense to go with just the permanent ones. And Chris, just remind us, what was the cost of the temporary ones? It was almost the same cost. Right. I didn't want to yeah. say like so 8,000. So that's the logic of the same to come back to us. So the additional cost right. is the engineering. Right. right. Exactly. Yes. Correct. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, any questions? For time, Rare, Chris? I might have missed it. What, what are we doing? Well, that's a good question. Luke's is, you know, they're, they're very busy right now. That's why I had to wait so long. Um, I actually just got the estimate back today. 
uh, and you know we had met you know uh, last earlier last week. Um, I really didn't get a time limit from him when he has the, when the opportunity to, to put it together. So he puts it together. Does our public works help install? It would probably be a private company. And our uh, public that works do doesn't the, have to that do that. Do the installation. And he, he indicated to me that it's very important to have something. Do. It's got to be done properly. Yeah. Otherwise, it's not going to hold up. And the price um, is an installed price. I'm sorry. The pricing is an installed pricing. Yeah, the price of yes. Yes. yes, that was the estimate from the public works director to install the these structures permanently. Right. Yes. Install. Okay. I have a question. Sure. And I, I know we've gone over this. I just want to make sure we're confident that everybody on Landon Street is comfortable with this. I I we identified right where we think these should go. Right. I personally spoke to the people who own the properties directly in front of them. Right. And they said absolutely we want them here okay all right well that's that's very helpful to know two of the three place and placements are one is my store one is my grandmother's house mm -hmm. the other oh, well, the that other house. Is <laughs> <laughs> wow. you don't want to wow. speak to yourself okay. Okay. Yes. Hey, grandma can we put this yeah. there I got that okay exactly you've actually had two meetings with the public then no I know that I know that but I want to make absolutely what I don't want to have happen is yes. if we go forward with this and we get it installed mm -hmm. and suddenly some somebody shows up and says I don't want this thing in front of my house I'll, I'll tell you on Sunday afternoon I was doing leaves on Landon Street on two different properties and in order to start you need to stand in the road and it is the most dangerous thing you can imagine short of standing on mm -hmm. I-95 mm -hmm. because people don't care right they don't care that I'm standing in the road with an orange backpack blower on that is obviously visible right. they just go flying by it they, it, they just mm -hmm. don't care well I, I'll tell you I'm very comfortable supporting this uh, project but I do we have a layout from the engineer as to where this is all going to go. You will have a layout. Yeah. Yeah. We will we have. Will. We have okay. yeah, you have to approve this to get that layout. So, so subject to that layout being, yes. you know. And, and then you'll have to approve the funding for the construction portion. Right. The funding okay. tonight so is just for the engineer. Just for the, oh, that's how. Correct. Okay. Okay. Just for the engineer. Down there I'll make that motion. I, I yeah. just yes. have, okay. I'll second it. Okay. And then I have a question. The motion. Well, well we're, we're taking right. this up under no, 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 no. Tony's report. Oh, okay. the funding right. request later. But thank Take you. Take it back. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> signage. Is there required signage to warn folks about this? I know we're in Westville. I come down in this speed humps. And That's all part of the It's engineer. not flashing. or It's just no. a, a sign sign that says speed hump. And signs and painting on the Got it. Okay. And everybody's cool with having signs. Yeah. When I actually have pictures from New Haven. Uh, that show exactly what it will look like. Okay. I mean, they have signs showing you that there is going to actually be a speed hump at that location, uh, both in, in both directions, east and westbound. Um, and they go and across it'll, it'll the be very road? visible. Is it across the whole road so no one can? They it's could, across the road. I always look for the road. almost all the way across. The road. When we started <laughs> this this project it was almost seven years okay. ago, the the idea of speed humps or speed tables was fairly new right. to us and into mm -hmm. Connecticut. And things have moved very quickly in the state. And if you drive around other towns in Connecticut and even in Massachusetts, you'll see these very frequently. Mm -hmm. They're being used in lots and lots of places be mm -hmm. because they're effective. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think that this is going to be. Sometimes they only go halfway across the road, that's, and then people do that's this. That's They go around. Them. Yes, and you may have. So I mean, a speed bump. That's a bump. These are humps. Yeah. Humps. It's a different thing. It's a different thing. And it's right, not making that this is not like what they have at the high school. So it's good. It's not like something. what they have at the high school. Yeah, got okay? it. Which right. is another issue. Exactly. Yeah. Right. That is another issue. Which you can ride around. Which Any I other questions? Thank you. For Ray or Chris? If not, thank, thank you. you for your work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, the next item is a recommendation from Kupa and. Um, Laura Ferenti Ferendez is here to make a request, I believe, um, regarding the recommendation of the commission. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Hello. Good seeing you. I'm here this ev evening as the vice chair of COOPOP, the community use of publicly owned property. And um, we would like to present to you a moratorium on the establishment of new markers on the Fitzgerald property to, to make sure that we conduct a study, um, a four-month mor moratorium, so that once we complete our study, then we have some guidelines of where to place the benches, 
or other gardens to decide where we're going to go from here. The um, plans that we have in place haven't been updated in a long time, and so I think it's very important for us to look at them, to study them, to hear from the public, from uh, our residents, and then to make a decision on what's best for the property and, and for our residents. So, um, benches? Benches. No, no. Gar uh, gardens. When you say gardens, do you mean expanding? Expanding the, land? the gardens, but clearing the lands. If it's a, um, an existing garden that someone has given up or that is under use, would the moratorium apply to that? Or just expanding? Expanding further. further. Expanding not, further. Not anything that has been a garden before. Right. Everything that's been a garden, will let it stand. Right, but no. But moving forward, if they want to expand the garden space, we need to de decide if we have to, uh, enough gardens or if it's going to be uh, a meadow or if it's going to be habitat, you know, for uh, wildlife or whatever, you know, the commission makes the recommendation to the Board of Selectmen and then, mm -hmm. you know, we can proceed from there. And I think with four, four months um, gets us a little bit into the gardening season, but right. not too much. So you say by March, you right. be back with Well, that's really around the time that people start doing, working in their gardens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So four months is enough? Four months, I think, is enough. Okay. Yeah. Because we're, we're moving quickly. We're, we're putting together a application, which we didn't have prior to this. Uh, we're putting together the guidelines and what the specifications should be in order for uh, people to understand what's involved in being a, a gardener at the Woodbridge Community Garden. And so they understand no pesticides. And again, we're exploring you know, the fences, you know, how high do the fences, should that fences should be, should there be some kind of uniformity. Um, so these are all the questions and issues that we're determining at this point in time. Mm -hmm. I think that's very, good. excuse me, um, I think Sorry. that's appropriate uh, given the, the charge that we gave you and asked right. you to look at. Right. And um, I think working also with the the ad hoc committee that's looking at the best right. organic practices. I know you've been in contact. Yes, we've been so in I contact. They've been sending us uh, information, and so it's it, it's a good connection. Good. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, other questions or comments for Laura? Mm -hmm. And Susan's on our uh, as our liaison, and so. Yeah, it's, it, it's certainly a, it's a robust conversation needs to take right. place, and actually, I think they <coughs> really talked through the moratorium idea very effectively. And I, I, I'm prepared to support it because I know we've had request, we've had bench requests, and we also had a request for a sign, which I think um, you know I hope you'll be considering, which is about driving slowly once you enter Absolutely. onto the property. That, so that is, I think that's one of the issues. Mm -hmm. And perhaps even designating where the car cars can go mm -hmm. and who can go by the community garden and the speed limit that mm -hmm. right. they should travel at. Because I've been there and cars have like gone yes. speeding by me and you you say, well, wait a minute, how fast are they going? And the dust comes, you know, right by you. So, um, yeah, it's very important for safety, for so that everyone in, in the community can enjoy the gardens. We might have a few extra speed bumps we can give. Oh, we, you know, so bad. I mean, yes, there are bumps right? or bumps. <laughs> well, whatever. Talk, talk to Chris. I just want to Chris. This is an important thing. It, it is. It is. It's, 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 it's very good. important. Yes. I'm glad I you guys agree. are looking at this. It's wonderful. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thanks for thank sure. you. Huh? I have one question, Laura. So I, I know Coopop in the past hasn't handled this, um, but maybe you know by now because you've probably been in contact or will be in contact with the people who have been handling our community garden requests. Right. I'm just wondering, during this moratorium, when typically do those requests come in for new gardens? I'm assuming it's sometime during the I winter believe, or early in the year. I believe some have come in already. So. Okay. So it, they'll, they'll be informed. They'll be informed. Passes yes, that if moving forward, made. moving forward, if it's a, a, an existing garden, that's okay. But if it's a new piece of new plot, then we're going to say let's hold off for four months to, to make a decision on if that's something that we're going to move forward with. And there are a lot of unused existing plots right now. It's unlikely anyone would get shut out if they wanted to right. start a garden. 
Joe, did you Well, I think that, that, that's, one of, that's one of my questions. I'm not clear. So if there's an existing garden plot that someone didn't really work last year or whatever, they still have that plot, right? Probably. So, so we're not telling them they can't Correct. Garden their plot, right? No, correct. No, because it's I, existing. It's right. I, I think. Well, I didn't know exactly what existing meant. So, that's what, you know, I think that's a good point, and I think we should be clear about it in looking at the motion. That um, I'm, I'm going to try to word the motion and see if this captures it, because I think it's an important point that we um, approve the recommendation of Kupop that there be a four-month moratorium on the Fitzgerald property with respect to new benches, new signs, you said markers, I assume that's yes. signs, and um, clearing of lands. Right. The latter does not include any part of the Fitzgerald property which is currently um, being gardened or that has been gardened in the past, even if it's going to a new gardener. Right. I know that wasn't very elegant. Yes. But no, I, I, I think I understand it. I'm wondering why we need the moratorium because I don't think anybody can do any of that unless they get approval in the first well, instance. So there has well. been some clearing of the further more lands without it without approval. Right. And I, so I don't think that's correct, Laura. No, no I don't okay. think so. There hasn't be, there hasn't okay. been anything. Um, I have no problem with the moratorium. I guess yeah. I think we have a built-in moratorium because well, nobody can do any of that. I think. To, can I? take a stab at this sure. thing. So uh, that's correct. And Kupop knows that any bench, for instance, needs to be approved here. But what it's saying to the public is, don't bother applying for the next four months. We're not going to act on anything because town-wide, we're just going to suspend action. And I think that's, that it seems to me that's an appropriate notification to give to so the town. To well, the, to, to but, to clarify, to them, but to clarify well, Joe's well, question, well, the, there are, I think in the past, this is one of the reasons Kupop is looking at it. It was a pretty um, pretty informal system, although uh, right. Andy and Thera Stack did a wonderful They're job. They're doing a wonderful so job. So if somebody, right. if there were not existing plots and somebody, suppose they got all taken, then the Stacks might say, okay, we're going to go farther. I don't know that there was any limitation on that. So now it's kind of, to Susan's point, there's notice to everyone that other than areas that have, that are currently being Gardened or that have been in the past, there'll be a moratorium. Mm -hmm. Is that right? I think I like that. I yeah. just wanted to add, I don't know if this is appropriate. Should we put a date in the four months? Yes. So that I was going to suggest that. The friendly that's amendment a very good to your, idea. Uh, mm -hmm. your uh, yeah. and also, could we, once we decide this and motion this, somehow get it up on the website for folks that are perhaps searching for? I don't know if that's something we can do, Betsy. What do you think? I don't know. Idea. Again, I'll uh -huh. throw that out Too for good. a discussion. Um, okay. So I'm done. Would you would you be comfortable if we said that you'll make your report to the Board of Selectmen in time for us to consider it at our March meeting? Yes. Okay. So Absolutely. So maybe a week before, by the, by the first of March, okay. I think would be. Yes. Absolutely. And if it's if it doesn't work out, you'll let us know. Yes. Or if, or if you're ready sooner. Yeah. 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 If we're ready sooner, sooner. We'll right. let you know. Right. Good. That's good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank so you. Did you make a motion? Yeah, I second. I made, yeah. I made the she right and added a friendly bill. It's amended to say that the report will be presented to presented the board by March 1st. March 1st. And it clarified that it does not include past current or current gardens, areas that have been gardened. Correct. Used as gardens. Okay. Very good. Okay. All right. Uh, so any other questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Thank, Thank you. you very much. Lauren. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, item number seven is the Ordinance Committee report. We thought that we would be reporting this evening on a proposed amendment to our gun ordinance. We had an Ordinance Committee meeting just before this meeting, and some um, new points were brought up to us that we would like to consider so that we will not be making a recommendation this evening. Mm -hmm. And next we have the report of our Administrative Officer and Director okay. of Finance, Thank you. Genovese. Thank you. Um, I have a report through October of this year, and uh, the report is a uh, budgetary surplus of about $80,000. The um, projected fund balance at the end of the year is $4.37 million, or 7.4 per six of our annual uh, projected expenditures. <laughs> No, I'm sorry. Yeah, I got nervous. Yeah. Oh, I got real scared. I got right. scared too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said seven. Yikes. <laughs> uh, so a couple of highlights. 
Uh, we have a, uh, a surplus in um, intergovernmental revenue of about $52,000. We've discussed this previously. The uh, FEMA award is about shy, a little shy of $70,000. So that's um, part of that surplus. Uh, the Woodbridge uh, reduction in municipal aid was $16,000. And um, that's largely targeted on um, the reduction aid came to pilot grants was the major focus of those reductions. So those towns that have um, larger pilot grants got hit a lot harder than we did. Um, and talking to some of the other finance directors, even though proportionally population-wise or wealth-wise, mm -hmm. sort of interesting. So does everyone know what pilot uh, is? Um, I think maybe we should explain Okay, sure. It. Pilot yeah. grants are um, when the uh, town receives a payment in lieu of taxes for um, ta land that's generally not taxable whether it's hospitals or colleges or uh, state land. Okay. So we don't, we don't have much proportionally to other towns, so we didn't get um, cut as uh, much as some other towns did. Uh, in expenditures, we have a $12,000 savings in debt service because uh, of our refinancing that we did, refunding we did in June. That increases to over $100,000 next year for our budget, so that's good news. And um, there's a uh, surplus in parks of about $10,000 because of uh, the time it took to get a full, full uh, time position on board. So those are our major items for the year. Any questions so far? Tony? Okay, then we'll go to funding requests. Um, and the first one is the, um, the repairs to engine number nine that Sean described to us. Does everybody have the papers for that? Yes. Um, Jerry passed those out already. Yeah. So uh, I will, I will uh, move that we approve funding request number fifteen sixteen oh five in the amount of twenty eight thousand. Is that the same number that you had in the memo? Seven two seven. Yeah. yeah. Twenty eight thousand two hundred two two seven. Two two seven. Yeah. Two, two, seven. Oh, okay. yeah, two, two, seven. Actually, okay. his funding request was twenty eight two two eight. Is there a second? Yeah. Second. 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 Any additional questions or comments on this? If not, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Thank you. And the second will, will be for the engineering study for the industry. And I think we're just passing out the information now. Well, that's being passed around. You might ask a question. I know Dr. Stella wasn't here, but actually on his budget, or on school's budget, I noticed a couple of numbers that really stuck out. I was just wondering if you have a word at all on the report. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of them are, no, 1,500% over budget because there obviously something came up that wasn't expected. One was $50,000 instead of three. And, uh, and a few of those different I can certainly bring those up. up to I'm them. just wondering, in the total, in total, I can tell you that the they're having a um, an issue this year with special education. Right. And so um, while I don't know any of the details, I do know that they are having an issue with that this year, and that they um, anticipate needing funding for that. So are we uh, the last time he reported, he felt they had trimmed it down. Maybe they were about two hundred thousand off. It's about two. F it was a little over 250, oh. 252 in that neighborhood. Okay. We almost have before us <laughs> funding request <laughs> in the year 1506. This is in the amount of $4,800 to, um, to engage Luke's consulting engineers to provide design plans, specifications, quantity and cost estimates for the speed humps on Landon Street, as was described to us this evening. I'll move that. Um, that funding request, is there a second? Second. Any questions or discussion? No. If not, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Thank you. Okay, the next item is um, just a brief update on the Country Club of Woodbridge when we spoke last about the different scenarios and we talked about the open space scenario. We um, acknowledged readily that we made certain assumptions uh, because there are sort of infinite assumptions you could make about what open space would be and how it would be used. And uh, the information has been passed out that evening. We asked if there were other assumptions you would like to see analyzed by Tony. And 
Uh, Joe asked a couple of questions, which Tony has looked into. Maria, I know you said something this yes, afternoon. Yes, this morning. And Tony will definitely look into that for the next meeting, which we'll talk about the date. Excellent. So that, um, so that we can, you know, have him analyze those. Certainly. Things. So do you want to give us the updated information? Certainly. I, um, I did look into um, some of your questions, uh, Joe, and um, wanted to share some information. Hopefully it's uh, helpful to the board. Uh, the first is, um, it's essentially centered around um, structurally or what, what sort of expenses that we have, uh, uh, estimates that we have for repairs that I can share with you um, for the facility. I could, I could tell you that we've looked into patching the roof and um, the patching the roof for the existing leaks, it's about $25,000. So that'll, that'll patch the existing leaks. Not sure how long the patches will last or how, when a new leak will show up, but that's um, how much the roof patch will be. The um, terms of, um, we were sort of asking the, um, the, um, the roofer about replacing the entire shingle roof and uh, the uh, $650,000 is what the report has from 2010. And um, the, the issue is what's, um, as I understand it, not being an expert in this field, what damage is underneath the shingled roof. Mm -hmm. And not really knowing that until you actually take off the shingled roof. So um, we didn't really get an estimate any, any further than, than what we have here. I mean, uh, you know. Which is what again, 200 something? 650. It was 650,000 was the estimate here. And again, I, I don't know if that how close that even is based on what the dam you know if there, if there is any. I mean, you know, you just don't know. Dollars are five years old. Right. This is from 2011. Um, we do have a, um, uh, a we price a new furnace, furnace, which would be about forty-five thousand um, dollars. We could continue to repair the existing furnace depending on what the issue is. Uh, so we do have contingency plans in place to repair the existing furnace through the winter if something happens. Um, but f for a new furnace, that's how much that would cost. So our current process of repairing the furnace could take us through this year, hopefully, and um, and, and and we'll see about next year. But, um, so that's that issue. Um, the other, uh, so those are the major issues that have come up. It's mainly the roof, the furnace. Uh, and the um, the windows, we did receive a price. This was a few years ago to replace just the windows in the main room. The whole bank. That bank. The bank right. Yeah. And that was about $25,000 so at that time. Yeah. I, I'm not sure how, if, if that's still valid or. It sounds low. It, it seems low, yeah. It does seem low. It sounds like about 10 frame. times low. Too. Right. <laughs> so I, I don't, I mean, we have a written. But I'm not sure if the damage wasn't nearly as bad then as it is okay. now. So they have a curved window. That's probably <laughs> yeah, right. right. So we would have to update that price. Yeah. Um, and the other issue is um, that we have looked into is if we want to winterize the facility, mm -hmm. and that would involve, as I understand it, uh, making sure that the sprinkler system is drained properly in mm -hmm. our areas that have to be. Um, uh, there's some plumbing required in order to do that. Mm -hmm. Can you, when you say winterize, you mean uh, shut means, it down? Correct. That means shut down the facility so there would be no use. And so it wouldn't be so heated because heat. if it's not heated, you can't have a sprinkler system. Right. The water. Oh, and we would shut the water <coughs> off so there's no water to the facility. Would that be just for the winter, and then you would start it up again, or if you do no, that, it's it wouldn't make sense to do that because the cost to do that is not worth. You don't save enough. In, we've looked into this too. We okay. save enough in oil to cover the costs. To do starting, that. It's right. So winterize means so essentially shut down. permanent sh sh shutting down, yeah. on, at least on a long term uh, basis. They really have to drain the entire building, all right. the plumbing and the entire Correct. building. Correct. Right. And everything. All the sprinklers and all the plumbing. Right. Are we prepared to do that for this winter now? No. No. Well, that's no. This winter we we have heating oil. We've ordered uh, oh. heating oil at least for the a little. I mean, don't order for the whole winter. We order just for. Um, so we're prepared to heat it minimally. This which winter. is about 45 degrees, I think. Mm -hmm. Which is what we did last year. Correct, which we do every year. Okay. Tony, um, someone raised a question this week about putting a tarp over the parts of the roof that are leaking. Right. Um, is that something So we, we I've, we've asked that we've considered that too, and the question is how long the tarps will last mm -hmm. um, based on um, them blowing off or 
and it's, it's not necessarily a longer term solution maybe it lasts you know See, I was told six to nine months but 12 months and then it, you'd have to decide if you do it just where it's leaking currently right mm -hmm. I mean, and that would be obviously a less than twenty twenty five thousand dollars to fix the patches but it won't last nearly as long so also do we know exactly where I, I know we seen where it leaks inside mm -hmm. but my experience with leaks which unfortunately I've had is that the, the leak on the roof on the outside may not be right above where we see the yeah. leak yeah, so yeah, we'd have to have down, somebody know, yeah. assess yeah. somebody the, would have to assess where the leaks where are where it is which Correct. might not be so mm -hmm. good. um other well, I, was, I was just gonna say so so yeah that answered so I mean what, what I was really probably wasn't real specific on why I asked that but if we were to keep the land as open space in some capacity we had um, we had a an estimate to demolish the building my thought was you know what would it cost to really put that building back into some shape for some governmental use some space use that we had as the town because you know it has the locker rooms there you could put the fitness center there you could oh okay. you could put um, uh, Human service, wh whatever it might be, we need we need space in town. So, so my thought was, hey, you know, if someone's going to go make it a banquet facility or a wedding, whatever, they got to put a lot of money into it. But what I was thinking is, you know, what what could we do to just keep that as you know, governmental town space, assets, town, space, town yeah. asset that we could use doesn't have to be real fancy space, but. It's oh, got to be cool. dressed up, and the roof has to. So that's kind of where I was going with that. Because okay. it sounds to me like even that is going to be quite costly. So Nursing home care is expensive. <laughs> that's what it is. is. Sure. So, so that's where I was going with it anyway. The other issue I'm not sure about is the elevator, and what would be required, right? With that, so it takes a lot more more investigation. Yeah. We could do if you ongoing. wanted us to. Ongoing. Yeah. Right. So. Um, while we're on this, we're, uh, we did send out, Jerry um, asked the board if people would be available on December 2nd, mm -hmm. right, for a follow-up meeting, it would be a special meeting where we just talked about the country club, um, we can follow up on any questions that come up, we, um, we've spoken with Toll Brothers, they would be available to come. I know um, Maria and Joe both weren't sure, do you know if you um, know that? Is there an alternative date that you could come up with? It's an important date for me so and I, I, would, I, I really have a lot to say about the country club especially in the open space um, criteria so I don't want to miss it but right. mm -hmm. I'm hoping that we can find an alternative date so well, we wouldn't do it without you Right. I mean, we won't do it unless everyone agrees to do it. The, right. um, the thing is, you know, we start having our budget meetings. We're, we're booked so many nights. So I think the alternative will be that we do it at our regular meeting at the, on the 9th. But because we always have so much business mm -hmm. on the 9th, I was just hoping we could have a dedicated evening. But if you can't... I have a question, Mary. Can, can you do it? Is there any other time on that day, like if we start early, well, we start early, uh, later early and be oh, done by 6.30, is that possible? Um, uh, yes, earlier that day. So if we did it on the 2nd, maybe around 4.30, does that work? Uh, Four? I don't know how Ellen feels about that. But no, that's fine. And Joe also had a potential conflict. So I, I, I do have one, and I, I basically said it. You know, if others had one, that would be fine with me. If I could be here, I can move that conflict. If four o'clock sounds good to me. Uh, it's four o'clock, and how long are we going? I'm just thinking it would liberate the evening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um. So we would um, we could check with Toll, and they're if they're available at four o'clock. So why don't we do that? And what time? What yeah, time I, mean, we I, I can go. I have to be out of here by 6.30. Okay, oh, that's, that's, sure. well, that's, yeah. yeah. that's a very good suggestion. Yeah. Okay. All right. So All right. we plan for that um, from 4 to 6.30. Is that yeah. 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 Well, yeah. 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 Good. Can I reserve the right to have to tell you a little something different? I don't. Oh, you can't? <laughs> I will. I have something earlier that's going to run probably yeah, yeah. past that, but maybe I can be a little late or something right. like that. Okay. I'll, I'll let you know. Well, it, maybe well, I'll let you know. Maybe 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 I'll let
No, just okay. let, let Jerry know, and we'll yes. we'll try to come up with something. I'm not putting it in here yet. Okay. <laughs> great. Four oh, o'clock sounds uh, good. <laughs> tell me, thank you. <laughs> okay. Can we, I'm sorry. One last thing on about that. Are we expecting that night to basically discuss the Toll Brother options or all the whole project as, as a possibility, or? I think we, as much as we can cover, we should cover. So but at the last the meeting, there was a request to have Toll yeah. come to answer questions. And actually, if there's anything else that you would specifically, I know Maria has some things mm -hmm. that we just got. We're going to take a look at that. Mm -hmm. I encourage you, please, to let Tony know as soon as possible anything else so that he can check numbers, find numbers, if it's possible to do that, okay. um, right. so that we can move forward. So Toll will be part of the... Yes. It's not yes, just about that we don't have to, no, not at all, because we'll, we'll talk about the open space oh, options. We may come earlier, because originally they were okay for six, so we hope yep, so we'll check with them. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, okay, good. So the next item is item number nine, which is to authorize the first selectment to sign the microgrid agreement with United Illuminating. This is the agreement we've been talking about for quite a while, mm -hmm. to go ahead with the microgrid project. Our um, attorney, Paul Michaud, who's been working on this lot, has uh, approved this contract. And um, is there a motion to authorize the first elected to sign? So moved. Second. Second. Thank you. Any questions or discussion? I, Maria? I have, I, I don't know everything about it, but what I know about it, um, I have many questions, and I know it's been approved by the board, and it's been approved by, you know, it's, we're trying to push it forward. I think I'm going to abstain okay. if there is a vote. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That's yeah. Yeah. Um, any, any other questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Abstention? Yes. Okay. To, um, off, can I just walk off? It, it's on page two. Page two. That's Paragraph two. Yes. B.I. Just fix that typo. Typo? Yeah. Where are we? Three million thousand dollars. All right. Come on. What do you mean? <laughs> is it three million or is it three thousand? Uh, I it's three million, but it's just. Mm -hmm. If oh, it's fully approved million. by it's council, million. someone didn't see yeah, it. Yeah, someone, yeah, so yeah, I'm just saying, it's just, yeah. just, we'll just, just that. do yeah, that. Yeah, it's, it's the uh, deep grant amount right. that we turn over today. And I, I also wanted to mention, Maria, if you want some more background, you know, just give Tony a call or stop in, mm -hmm. and we can fill you in on background any questions you have, just so. You Get yeah, I, 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 I want to know exactly, but what, I've, I, what I know about it, I, I really not happy with it, so. Oh. Okay, well maybe you can have yeah. some more information. With sure, sure. Um, okay, now item 10, um, is there a motion to authorize the first electman to sign the lease purchase agreement for the purchase of the new fire truck? So moved. Second. Thank you. Oh. And this is the project. Yes, yeah, so I want to just do a little background yeah. here. So um, because it's, I mean, we, we've got the pricing for the, um, the fire truck. And the fire truck should be arriving um, next week. And we should fund it probably a few days before Thanksgiving. And in order to get the best possible rate to time this, we just, I just went out to bid for it. And um, Chase Bank was the winning bid. Mm -hmm. And um, so they're just start getting the, they haven't gotten the documents to me yet. But in order to make the meeting, I thought maybe it would be something that could be acceptable as, as accepted by a town council. Oh, oh, I see. So you want the motion to be that the first election is authorized to sign the agreement provided it is approved by the Correct. Town council. Correct. Correct. Provided they're, because okay. I don't, I don't have time to get the documents because the rate just came in. They're yeah. working on the documents, but the meeting. Um, I think you wanted a special a daily rate, or is that a rate that they lock in for? They locked days? it in. They yeah. locked it in for um, into until uh, the day before Thanksgiving. So you want the right to be able to save that rate? Correct. Right now going up. Correct. Because so okay. rates went, they're going yeah, up as you know because of the yes, um, the Fed announcement. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so one point six percent. In case anyone. Oh, that's that's <laughs> so uh, with no. that friendly <laughs> amendment, <laughs> what all would you? Yeah, we accept. Well, it. If, okay, so with that amendment, that is provided town council reviews the agreement mm -hmm. and approves right. it. Okay. Any other discussion or questions? If mm -hmm. not, all those in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? <coughs> Thank you. Um, and now we have Betsy's report, assistant administrative officer. 
just have a couple updates and reminders. One is the solar challenge and the energy challenge are um, going to end on December 31. Um, the solar challenge is um, the energy, the ad hoc energy advisory task force is partnering with the Connecticut Solar Challenge and they've brought um, a vendor to town that's offering reduced rates to Woodbridge residents. And the more kilowatts that are installed in Woodbridge through this vendor, um, the larger a free system that the town, the town will earn. So right now 25 residents have signed a contract with this company. Um, the town has earned a free five kilowatt system. If more people sign up, we could earn up to a seven kilowatt system, which would be the largest one that's been awarded through this program. The task force just had a workshop last week and there were about 35 people there. So we may see a bump in that. That would bring us up to seven kilowatts, which would be really exciting. The other part is they're promoting home energy audits. Um, and again, that ends on December 31st. The benefit to residents is if you go with one of the two companies through this um, program, the fee is $99. That's no matter what company you go with. But if you go with one of these two companies, they'll donate $25 to the town's food and fuel fund, which is obviously a great benefit to a lot of our residents. Um, the other thing I want to mention is the um, town and EDC held a third Woodbridge business after hours at Grimaldi's last week. It was really well attended. There were several people there who'd never been to Grimaldi's before and there was a lot of good networking going on so I think that's going really well. Um, tomorrow is Veterans Day as you all know. So town offices will be closed, the library will be closed, and the transfer station will be closed. And the annual Veterans Day ceremony will be held outside um, in front of the um, VFW monument at 1045 a.m. If it rains, it'll be moved into the center gym, and it looks like it may be raining. So, Thank you. And Betsy, thank you for all your work on the, um, the energy, with the energy task force and, and all the great work that you've done. Thanks. Yeah, it's been really terrific. Any questions for Betsy? All right. Um, Jerry, any report? Just a very, I just wanted to give everyone an update on our tax assessment appeals that we have outstanding. <coughs> we have about five, four active ones, and I just am happy to report that there was one that we were considered to be, uh, could have been an issue because it was a, a large uh, valuation, and that's a property, an office building on Lunar Drive. They filed the appeal about six months ago. We've been defending it. We've filed production requests for them to answer, and the case was assigned for pretrial. And lo and behold, we received a call from the lawyers who represented the plaintiff, the, the owners, saying they're withdrawing the appeal. So mm -hmm. that ended successfully without any compromise or or, or uh, uh, changes to Betsy Quist's appraisal, which is a compliment to Betsy, and she was correct. And I think they must have done their own appraisal, and they've determined that ours was pretty much in line. So that's good. We have another fairly large one that's still pending and that is the owners of the Willows have filed an appeal about a long time ago also about a year and a half ago and they have done nothing the plaintiffs have done nothing to move it along so the case is just sitting there we don't know whether at some point they're going to withdraw their case but there's been no activity at all on that one which from our point of view is fine and we have two uh, residential appeals by a fellow uh, owners by the name of Nugent up on Round Hill and Perkins, um, I forget what Perkins is, but both of those things are active. We have pretrials in both cases within the next six weeks, so I hope to be able to report whether they're either settled, resolved, or they're going to trial. Thank you. Any questions for Jerry? Joe? <laughs> I know you look perplexed. <laughs> I'm not perplexed, but I am wondering, so I'll talk to you. Okay, <laughs> great. Um, all right, and anybody else? No. Uh, item 13, um, is there a motion to acknowledge receipt of the town clerk's report? So moved. Second. Any questions or discussion? Not. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, and now thank you, Mrs. Shaw, for getting us just about caught up on our minutes. Um, First is the regular meeting of July 8th, 2015. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? Second. Thank you. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? 
extensions. Thank you. I think these are just amazing. I mean, 18 pages is just, it's, it's incredible. I don't know how you do it. I just have to make a comment. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of August 12, 2015, also a regular meeting? So moved. Second. Thank you. Any questions or discussion? Not all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? And finally, the minutes of September 16th. That was a special meeting because we had changed the date. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Not all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Um, Okay, first selectman's report. I'd like to start with upcoming events. Betsy mentioned Veterans Day tomorrow. We have a very moving um, ceremony that we do every year here in Woodbridge, and it's at 1045, either in front of the center building or more likely tomorrow in the center gym. Everyone is invited to attend. Uh, also, I wanted to mention that we will be having the second in our um, Wisdom of Woodbridge lecture series. The first lecture was Mary Papazian, who's president of SCSU, and it was a very well received uh, lecture. As as uh, Dr. Papazian said when she began, since she was the first, um, she thought it was great because she wouldn't be compared to anyone. But she did send, <laughs> set, set a very high bar. She was really terrific, telling us about SCSU and how she views the future of higher education. The next one will be Rob Klee. Rob lives here in Woodbridge with his family, and he's the Commissioner of Energy and Environmental Protection. And he's very knowledgeable about many issues relating to the environment. The topic of his lecture is talking trash, and he'll be talking about recycling. And I, I, it's actually going to be very, very interesting about the best practices. Um, so I wanted, th that's on November 17th at 7 o'clock. And the next three lectures, starting with Rob's. At the JCC. That's right, will oh, be sorry. at the JCC. Mm. Um, the JCC has spoken to us about uh, making their facility available and doing some joint programs because they are a community resource and they would like to be working with us. So we're very happy about that. And they did a wonderful poster. I don't know if you can show this, but it does show we actually have a bigger poster. I have this little flyer. Um, Rob Clee's lecture, which is coming up in November. And I will just mention quickly that in January, Nancy Yao Masbach will be speaking about Chinatowns, China's towns, and Chinese towns, an evolving sense of community. And Nancy is great. That will be she a terrific is. lecture. And in March, Yaron Bech, who is the co-founder and CEO of Author, will be speaking. And he, the, that's one of our high-tech companies here in Woodbridge. He grew up in Woodbridge and has a business here. But again, for, for, the immediate, um, for your immediate calendars, Rob Klee on November 17th at 7 o'clock at the JCC. We are also continuing our partnership with Long Wharf, which we started last year. That was also a, just a terrific um, community event. People really loved it. And this year, the play that we'll be doing is Shakespeare's Measure for Measure. Mm -hmm. So a little more highbrow. Last year, we did a Steve Martin play. This year, we're doing Shakespeare. And the first event is on Thursday, November 19th. And that's, I, I don't have the time. Do you? I think it's I, 7 o'clock, and that's at the library. That's at the library, and I encourage you all to look at uh, the town website for all the other events. There are high school events and children's events, and then there also will be a Woodbridge night at the show where we get discounted tickets and a reception in advance like we did last year. But the first um, discussion will be November 19th. With respect to economic development, you know, I've been continuing to try to show support and reach out to our local businesses and do all we can to foster a good economic climate here in Woodbridge. We held our, I believe, first ever economic development workshop. It was sponsored by the New Haven Chamber of Commerce and it was led by the Connecticut Economic Resource Center. Um, it was very well attended by board and commission members. Many of you were there. And I think it helped us understand our local role as well as how we, we participate in the larger economy. And one of the points that was made is that it's very important to focus on business retention even before we go to business recruitment. And uh, that was good to hear because we have been really trying to do that. The event was held at Oak Lane Country Club, and the food was provided by Birchwoods, which is the restaurant there. And they're closing for the winter, but again, that's a local business, and so it highlighted what they can do. Uh, I've also visited um, in the 
visiting local merchants. Uh, Betsy and I went to Dean's Hair Salon and Hung's Nail Salon there and Olga's, and that was um, very interesting to see the background and how long Dean has been here. Um, it, was, it was very, uh, it was very interesting and good to see what they're doing over there. That's right on June Street and Selden. Betsy mentioned the business after hours. That's our second one and was successful. And I think the point Betsy made is so important that it brought people to Grimaldi's, a new local restaurant that people hadn't known about and a great networking opportunity. I want to thank Beth for attending on my behalf. I was out of and thank you so much. I enjoyed it. I'm going to go to more now. Good. I loved Good. it. <laughs> it was great. Um, and also thank you to Beth. Betsy for organizing a press release workshop for local businesses. A local res uh, Woodbridge resident, Kara Rosner, provi uh, provided a workshop for businesses on how to best promote their companies. We had the FOI informational meeting. Tom Hennick, the FOI public information officer, uh, comes every year or every other year. And as we all know, FOI is not intuitive. And we try very hard to comply with FOI, but can't always do that. He provided an overview and answered questions. And I do want to say, for those of you who weren't there, I did go over with him the incident we had where the special meeting had not been up on the website. And he said that, in fact, of course we should make every effort to get everything out to the public, uh, but that was not a violation because uh, the notice was timely filed, but when we sent it to the town clerk's office, the people who put it up on the website had left for the day, and he was fairly confident that that was, in fact, he was very confident that that was not a violation, but uh, nevertheless, it made us more cognizant of being aware of it. Uh, there's a lot happening at the West River, and that is so important. It's a beautiful environmental and ecological resource for our town as well as Bethany and New Haven, and there are efforts to clean up the river going from Long Island Sound all the way upstream. Uh, it also, the work that's being done there, particularly with respect to the Pond Lily Dam, will have um, an impact on the flooding that's been such a problem in the West River area. So the demolition of the, um, the dam has begun. And Beth, again, thank you for attending. This is something that some of our Woodbridge residents have been working on for many, many years. And special thanks to Frank DeLeo, Stephanie Charleglio, Buddy DeGenero, and others who have really stuck with this and worked with the other towns to, uh, to really make progress on this. Um, many wonderful community events are happening, and I think it's we should take every opportunity we can to celebrate our community and our community-minded neighbors here in Woodbridge. This Sunday was the dedication of a pavilion built by the Boy Scouts in memory of a deceased scout, Alfredo Canapari. The pavilion, uh, if you may recall, I, you weren't here at the time, Maria, but the first idea was that they would do the pavilion here near the library, and I think we all had some concerns about that, not being sure what would be happening in the town center. And they really found the ideal place, which is at Camp Whiting, which is the Boy Scout camp across yeah. from the Darling House. Mm -hmm. the structure is beautiful. It was just uh, really done so well, all with volunteers. And I do want particularly to um, recognize Scoutmaster Bob Tucker, who spearheaded the project. He's an architect. He designed it. And as he said to me, though, he helped with the building. And he, I think it, it was really dawning on him him what people have to do after he does the designing. <laughs> so um, it, was, it was a great community project. That same day, the Conservation Commission uh, did a walk on the Bishop Loop. Tony was there, as well as at the Boy Scouts. And it was just beautiful. It was a beautiful day. And we really appreciated seeing again the wonderful trails and open space that we have here in Woodbridge. I also visited Beecher Road School to see the new uh, UV pool filter in action. And there again, this was uh, contributed by the Woodbridge Aquatic Club. It's, to everybody just raves about it. It means that we use ma many fewer chemicals, less chlorine. It's much healthier for everyone, and particularly for asthmatics, can um, swim there. So uh, that, that's a great addition to the town. We've already talked about Truck or Treat, which was thousands of people enjoying themselves. and. Uh, really a, a terrific volunteer effort by the fire department. They put in many, many hours setting up and preparing for it. I also want to mention I attended the monthly South Central Connecticut Council of Governments meeting, 
and as well as the emergency preparedness meeting, which Deputy Chief Stewart led. And Tony was there as well, so that all people in town who are part of our emergency team were prepared for emergencies that may come up, largely looking at storms in the winter season. Um, Tony, this goes to a point you've raised. Uh, I met with Dr. Stella, who gave us updated budget information. He couldn't be here this evening, but just so that we are all aware, in particular, that special ed costs are up this year. This is for this fiscal year, and we could be looking at a $250,000 shortfall in that account. Uh, I also wanted to mention that um, no one has requested the opportunity, no one on the board, to reject the Woodbridge Education Association contract. You all got the email about that. It's been at Jerry's desk. You know, it was uh, long negotiated by the Board of Ed. So that will go into effect because uh, nobody has asked to challenge it. Uh, that's it on the first selectman's report. And I will move to liaison reports. I was not able to attend the Government Access TV meeting, but I was at the Amity Regional Board of Ed. And first, I want to say congratulations to the girls' volleyball team. We have the Southern Connecticut Conference League champions, and they are moving on to the state competition now. Great. They were just terrific. And special kudos to Michaela Cardoza, who was named the SCC 2015 Girls Volleyball Player of the Year. Wow. So nice. congratulations nice. to her. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the finance director, Jack Levine, has announced his retirement <gasps> mm -hmm. from Amity, which is a big change. Wow. Mm -hmm. He will finish out this school year, but he's he said he's ready to see what retirement right. is like. Wow. He's told me to. But, um, <laughs> he's giving himself a, a long glide path out till the end of the year <laughs> to see how he feels about it. Um, I also wanted to mention um, the budget discussion at the Amity Board of Ed. Woodbridge enrollment is up and other towns enrollment is down, which means budget impact for us. And it looks like for our next budget year, the increase for us could be uh, $500,000 or more mm -hmm. towards Amity. So as we think about uh, the various choices and decisions we have to make, I think these um, school issues are something that we should be thinking about at this time. So with that, other liaison reports, Susan? Um, you already heard from uh, Lore regarding what's going on with Coupop, so I won't repeat that. Uh, you already heard about the business after hours from East GD. EDC. EDC. Yeah. Um, their next meeting is Thursday, so I will be attending that. But I do want to report on uh, the police commission meeting. You may have already heard that the chief has tendered his resignation uh, because he's retiring, speaking of retirements. The uh, commission is going to be acting as a search committee of the whole. Um, uh, applications are already coming in. I believe it's going to be officially posted in the next week or so, and I think his retirement is effective to, uh, January 4th, if I'm not mistaken. I, I, so I, we, have, we have the memo from him. I think it is. I think that's right. Sure. Yeah, I think that's right. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have a lot of updated information beyond that, except that there's a, you know, obviously we think it's a terrific position. So hopefully they will find somebody good. Thank you. Is it possible we get that memo? Oh, sure. It's just like it's one just sentence that I'm retiring. It's just it's says, okay. just, oh, sure. I, first, I know it. It, it just happened. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It just happened. Yeah. So, um, I just was at the meeting. <laughs> Thanks for telling us. Beth? Thanks. Um, I did attend the Fire Commission meeting on October 19th. We heard a little bit about Engine 9. At that point, it had gone out for inspection. Now we know what's happening, so we took care of that. They talked about Truck or Treat, which we also talked about. Um, we talked about Engine 7 already, so that it's coming. Um, the department did have a practice run for the storm preparation. I guess there was a hurricane that we were supposed to have that went out to sea, so they right. got a chance to review what they will do, but hopefully we won't need it. Um, commission approved the uh, proposed capital budget, and uh, their next meeting is November 16th, which is coming up. Nothing, um, I did take notes, but there's nothing really related to inland wetlands to speak about, um, just the usual things that they do. Um, Human Services met on November 2nd. Um, I guess they're going to um, try to look into installing Formica in the computer room. 
and that will be coming up to us in the capital budget, so I won't talk about further things with that. They got a new bus on October 29th. Yes, they did, yeah. And they had a meeting with the drivers and the maintenance techs to review the necessary reports. They have to do insurance registration and payment details, but they're working on that. Um, I guess um, Ellen and Betsy met with Mary Ellen and perhaps uh, Sharon, Sharon Bender mm -hmm. about coming up with some kind of a, what they call a strategic plan for the senior center, giving the changing demographics of our town, and they're gonna continue to follow up with you on that. So that was kind of exciting. Um, Thanksgiving luncheon, which is sponsored and paid for by the police department, will be on November 20th. If you didn't get a chance to attend the holiday fair, it was wonderful. And it was in the gym this time, which was fabulous much more space and I'm sure they did very well. They're planning for collection and distributions of baskets. We got a youth services report. Um, they're getting, they received a check for $15,000 from AT&T uh, to be used to over two years in a career readiness program and that was sponsored by Themis and um, more on that I guess it will be an article in the newspaper about that but you must know about that Tony, the $15,000, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Okay. And I uh, got a report from Nancy Fun. Youth programs are going well and they will be meeting on December 7th. And thank you again, Ellen, for going away because I got to go to Maldives. <laughs> that was really wonderful. Um, it was really very, I'm going to go to more of those. That was an exciting yeah, thing. It's fun good. to watch um, businesses yeah. that haven't met each other before right. meet each other and right. network <coughs> a little bit. You know, I'm not a business, but it was fun to network anyway. And um, I did attend the press conference on the celebration of the removal of the Pond Lily Dam. Thank you again for being away because I loved it. It was a lot of, I would probably would have gone anyway. And as you said, Stephanie and Buddy De Janeiro, Frank DeLeo, and also Mike Walter worked on that oh, as well. Walter so it was very, it was really, uh, yeah. it was a fun thing. And um, also one point of personal privilege on the boys cross yes. country as well, because it's Barbara's son, <laughs> my friend. Um, the uh, boys cross country team took first place in the Southern Connecticut Conference and first place in Class Double L State Champions Great. last week. Um, so I guess Amity is going to be represented now in the New England Cross Country Championships next mm -hmm. weekend. And Harrison Black, who's my friend's son, won an individual medal. He's tenth in the entire state. Yay! Great. Right. And I'm done. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Joe. Oh, teacher's going out of work. Oh, oh. That's right, I'll be staying awake. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe by the time we get to Tony, he'll be like, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm still right. Go ahead, I'm still right. I'm still right. I'm still I think it's a great idea, but I'm not sure. <laughs> 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 yeah, I might have more questions. Really. I'll be quick to get to Tony. So I did I did attend the, um, there was a joint meeting uh, called by Jason Morrill of the Woodbridge Conservation Commission, to which I'm the liaison. Uh, so it was conservation, recreation, and coupa, and uh, you know they all they all came together and gave presentations. Uh, some of us were there. I forget who all was oh, there, but um, kind of you know what what they do, what their responsibilities are, and so forth, and and how they can work together because they kind of mesh with the properties and all. And uh, and uh, you know I think it, I think it's great, and I think they're going to do it at least once a year, if not more, to kind of keep that synergy going so so that's a good thing and um, I did not make the I had a conflict for the um, CCW Commission last meeting but uh, they did go over their forecast for the end of the year and it looks like I think it's thirty five thousand dollars that might come back to that's the what I heard, to yeah. the town yeah. so that's the projection of that you know on that revenue sharing right. It seems um, like a, a, so an up, an so up figure. Right? So, so that's good, but we'll wait to see what happens. And then, um, I think I misplaced it. But, oh, here it is. So they're going to come to us also with, with a, I don't know if they have, maybe they have, but um, a request for some tree removal for $3,500. That was discussed at the meeting. I don't know if they've come to us with that or not. It certainly hasn't been to our meetings. And then also they're coming to the town with perhaps um, a modification of the uh, enabling ordinance for the commission. Uh, they they want to maybe tweak that a little bit. So, um, and that didn't come before ordinance yet either. But that's what they talked about at that meeting. So, okay. thank that's you, it, Jeff. Pretty much it. Okay, um, I move on to two commissions. Uh, one of them is the Board of Ed um, at um, Beach Hill Road School, and I was not able to attend their meetings, um, but because 
I figured it wasn't so bad because I was relying on um, Dr. Stella to be to be making his reports. <laughs> um, uh, but anyway, um, I, I've uh, I've attended something which was very admirable. I think was is that they're starting their budgeting, and I like the way they are putting forth their costs and their concerns and all that kind of stuff. I think it's something that the town should use as a model, actually. Um, uh, and the other thing is the um, Recreation Commission. Um, they, there wasn't very much in their last meeting except that they talked about the Woodbridge Day, which, uh, and they talked about the success of their, the usual annual success of their road race, which I didn't know all the details, but I found out how, how quite admirable it is. It, 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 uh, it uh, you know, uh, ha people that, that do this are, are very proud of what they do, I suppose, and it was very, according to them, very successful. They had a place, unlike other years, they had uh, like a tent to save people from rain and all that kind of stuff, so that was good. Um, and then uh, there was some discussion, of course, what they were going to present to the, the tri-commission meeting between recreation, uh, Coop-up and also uh, conservation. They um, would like to actively ask con the, both the other commissions on where certain fields are going to be and plan for that. They think that's important to be in our plan of conservation and development. Um, and I attended that meeting. It was they, it was just a preliminary, so there were not really anything. Uh, you know, put down as far as their thoughts were concerned. Um, but anyway, that's it. Oh, there's one more thing. They are, they're still not happy, I guess, about certain things in their, um, in compensation for some, uh, from some work that is being done for the commission. Um, and I think they want to pursue that. Um, I'm sure those things are, you're aware of those things. Um, other than that, it's a privilege just to listen to these commissions. So cool. <laughs> so before we go to Tony Maria, I had a question. What about the um, Beecher budget process do you think is something we should be looking at that we don't do? Is there something in um, particular that... Well, I, I don't, I, I th I've had to do with budget in the past uh, for the town. And, you know, basically, you know, you confer with Tony and all that kind of stuff. It's not sure. I'm not sure this is a f this is something that you should really do, but I was just inspired by these people talking about all the little details that go into their budget. Mm -hmm. And and to me, I think that's important. It makes it makes sense. It makes the budget make more sense. Um, and I don't know how the town could do it, but I you know I, I have never really seen the entire picture of budget right. budget making, but. They, uh, I was impressed at how they do things. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure they do a very good job. Yeah. And when we get to our budget process, if there's something where you think you need more detail, of course, you'll just let us know. I was going to say, if you like detail, hang on here. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 you know. We're going to be detailed out. <laughs> that's well, that's good. Right. Home right. <laughs> well, I, I think they do zero-based budgeting, which is definitely more detailed. Yeah. Uh, both, both the high school and Beecher do zero-based budgeting, right. which is definitely more detailed. Yeah. It's, but I think Tony thinks we do just about yeah. the same. Is that right? We don't do no, everything, but nor do they. No, I don't, I don't think they do it that way. They don't do contractual matters no. as zero-based budgeting. No. So, yeah. And that's the biggest change. They can't, can't, they can't, they can't do the right. contracts, and right? Wait, so that's, so that's, that's, that's doing right. true zero-based budgeting. Right. 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 Everything outside start to do it. It's very small. That's the other thing. They go into a lot of detail. If you go to the high school budget, you'll see a lot of detail. I've sat through those many times. Okay, so anyway, I thought it was great. I do. Um, and before I do, I didn't want to interrupt when Beth was speaking, but Tony, for next meeting, I'm just wondering if we can request um, where we are on the grant for the human service for the senior center handicapped bathroom, where we are with what sure. kind of thing. Just for yeah. next meeting, I forgot to ask you earlier, sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, the two commissions, um, the library commission, which met last night, uh, and 
will be holding their next meeting on the 30th as a special meeting of November, and their next regular scheduled meeting is the 14th of December. Uh, budget so far is going well year to date. On November 19th, besides what Alan had already mentioned, uh, there is the official grand opening of the Bookstore Alley, which is held upstairs, and I believe all books will be for sale for a dollar and two dollars, everything they offer, mm -hmm. and so they're, they're excited about that. Um, there is a new vacancy. We have a uh, woman who uh, was left the uh, Children's Services. Uh, she's the assistant there. So there's been a turtle posting already, and there will be a special meeting on the 30th for that purpose. They hope to have a candidate by then that they can recommend to us for our December meeting. Uh, Panic button is still coming, it's yet to be installed. Uh, commission is recommending to close the library for one day a year for in-house staff development, uh, and that would be a development day each year. So right now what they're gonna do is study when the least impact would be, when there's no programs that day, the least used day of the library, and then they'll make that recommendation to Tony, to us. Uh, December 10th, was the day that Ellen referred to is the Woodbridge Night at Long Wolf Theater. And this $15 off each Woodbridge residence ticket as well as a reception to be had. And as Ellen said, it's Shakespeare's measure for measure. Um, and the last thing is they're hoping to replace the upstairs children department's carpet. And that will be uh, requested in our, in our capital budget for next year. Now the longer one. TPNZ. Uh, held a very long meeting on the 2nd of November. It went between three and a half and four hours. Uh, their next meeting is December 7th. And it started with Bruce Hyde, who's from Yukon Center for Land Use Education. He spoke of how they could provide assistance to TPNZ in the next few months on how to better plan for low impact development practices, taking a look at some of the zoning and, and the uh, implication. In implications they have right now currently in Lower Woodbridge and there is some mixed zoning there and there's some different uh, areas of uh, maybe there's a way to make it more uniformed and uh, so they're going to be looking at that as well as uh, other issues in town that maybe what our current regulations are and they're doing it all for free and they hope to have some recommendations for TP and Z by February. Um, there were two public hearings one was for Di uh, 19 Diana Drive where a new development is being seeked for a single family home. John Paul Garcia made the presentation. Uh, Bob Criscola, who was here, also spoke to certain waivers that were being requested. The commission uh, ended up in their work session approving with some special conditions uh, as that they were still looking for, but it was approved. Um, however, the second public hearing, which was 110 Luciani Street, as you all may know, uh, there's been an ongoing issue with a, a development that had been started and they, their permit ran out time-wise in September. So the uh, attorney for the construction company, Vizio Construction, uh, was there to file for a new application and a new permit uh, to go back to the development. Um, many people came from town to speak. Uh, anywhere from an attorney representing one of the uh, next door neighbors to uh, one of our local real estate agents who has the listings of the people across the street um, and having a very difficult time or what she said is an impossible time right now to get people to come to an open house or come look. Uh, basically, the new application is being asked for with uh, many changes from the original uh, application. Uh, especially involving the retaining walls and the drainage and um, the homeowners from that area are not happy about that. They're also going to be asking for blasting which could take anywhere from one to three weeks according to their attorney yeah. um, or additional hammering which would take even longer. So what happened is TPNZ ended up keeping the hearing open until next month because they've requested to hear from both the blasting company or potential and from the geo study that was supposedly done, but they don't really have a very detailed report and they're waiting to hear from those people about if it's even conceivable to change retaining walls and that type of thing. Mm. So the, the hearing will be uh, taken back up in December. And other than that, that's really it. Thank you. Stay tuned. Thank you. Is there a motion to adjourn? So, so, so. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone.